Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. We're going to focus on mammography workflow. And our guest is Christy Devine of Siemens Health and Ears. Christy, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. So, uh, Christy, you originally were a mammography technologist before joining Siemens Health and Ears. Is that correct? Yeah. I, so I joined Siemens Health and Ears recently as a product manager for women's health here in North America, but prior to um, coming into Siemens, I worked closely in a clinic with women and uh, physicians, you know, in, uh, taking care of women every day awesome. as part of my job. Yeah, I, I loved it. Awesome. So when we talk on this show about mammography, usually we talk about things like image quality and newer technologies like AI and, and DBT, but there's there's other factors with breast screening that are just as important, and that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, and these things are things like the, the 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 patient experience and how technologists work with equipment. Has that been your experience? Yes, you know, to your point, technological advances in mammography are extremely important, uh, particularly when we want to detect cancer earlier and to have fewer babies. You know, fewer false positives, um, fewer false negatives. And in fact, Siemens has some exciting things happening in the women's health space. We received 510K clearance for our newest member of the Mammal Mount family. Her name is Be Brilliant, and she is truly brilliant. Uh, but to your point, you know, medical care is human care, and we must make sure we are making advancements for the patient experience. There's a multitude of reasons why this is important. Ensuring patient comfort encourages patients to willingly participate in their regular screenings, which is proven to reduce breast cancer mortality, because when we find cancers earlier, they're more treatable, right? So ultimately, this means better outcomes for patients. And we want women to return to screening. In that same vein, women make 80% of the healthcare decisions in their family. So if I'm a healthcare provider, I want to make sure women who are the chief health officer of their family I want them thinking about their experience in a way that they will come back to me and bring their family to. Mm. So chief health officer, that's really a great way to put it. Uh, now, now, mammography screening is so important and it's been proven to reduce breast cancer mortality, but the compliance rates with screening aren't, you know, 100% of women aren't making use of this life-saving resource. Right. What are some of the reasons why a woman might choose to skip a screening appointment? Well, that's a big topic. Um, there's a lot of reasons. So fear of compression, anxiety about results, you know, maybe having a previous negative experience, maybe hearing about others' experience. Accessibility is a huge issue. Um, you know, we're all very busy. Maybe we've got a really busy calendar that we're trying to fit time in to take care of ourselves. You know, this list is really, truly long. But that striking statistic is that 40% of women decide to skip their next screening. That's the statistic you were kind of speaking to due to fear and anxiety associated with compression. And have you seen examples of this in your career as a technologist? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've seen the, this whole laundry list I just talked about um, of why women don't get screened. Uh, I spent more than a decade as a mammographer taking care of patients. I'm also someone who gets annual mammograms, right? So recently I had my screening done. And even though I'm familiar with breast imaging, I still found myself feeling anxious about the exam and anxious about the results. Yeah, so I guess it's really important to make sure that women feel as comfortable as we can. Now, the the mammographer is the staff member with whom patients have the most uh, interaction when they go into a, a breast screening facility. How how do they contribute to the patient experience? Uh, the role of a mammographer is extremely important. You know, the mammographer not only contributes to the technical aspects of getting great images for a great diagnosis, but they also play a vital role in ensuring a compassionate and supportive experience for patients. That interaction of patient, technologist, and equipment is extremely intricate, and it takes a finesse to get those great images. Yeah. Now, based on your experience, how important is it that technologists are comfortable themselves? We, we talked about 
the the patients being comfortable, how important is it that technologists are comfortable when they're when they're doing their job? This is something that gets overlooked, I think. And as important as patient experience is, ultimately a patient spends what five to ten minutes a year with that mammo unit, probably. You know, some are more, some are less. But who spends their entire workday with a mammo unit is technologists. And the job of that mammographer can be repetitive. And the way we work to position patients with that machine is unique compared to other modalities. So what this means is mammographers are susceptible to repetitive strain injuries, um, especially if the equipment they're working with doesn't really work with them. Now, now how, how common are complaints that, that you hear from mammographers? Uh, well, as a former Malmo tech, I can tell you I've experienced my own various aches and pains, um, typically my neck, low back, right hand and wrist since I'm right hand dominant. Uh, but in my role now, I still have the pleasure of continuing to communicate with mammographers. And just like any physical job, they also have back, neck and shoulder pain that is common. Uh, when I had my mammo, I talked with the technologist who was doing my exam, and she even mentioned that she had experienced a pretty significant shoulder injury while she was working. 60% of female technologists experience some sort of physical strain in while they're working. And unfortunately, this statistic does not surprise me um, as I've lived it myself. And then we see this happening to my colleagues who are still still doing imaging. Well, so what are some ways that we can reduce repetitive strain injuries and, and improve the technologist experience? You know, technologists have their workflow down to a fine science. These professionals have worked endlessly to perfect their craft so they can get the best imaging possible. What this means is that usually a technologist has a really standardized workflow. Uh, for example, when I did MAMOs, I always did the right CC, left CC, left MLO, right MLO every single time unless I needed to take some variation to accommodate a patient. You know, that's a given. So when I log into a unit, I want it to know exactly my workflow because that's what I do every time. And then what would be even better is if that unit read my mind so that as I work through the exam, it automatically moves into position for my next view. I also think it's important to reduce as many clicks as possible, you know, making sure any knobs are easy to turn and then any other features that we can automate would, would help immensely. So are these things that we can build into the systems? I mean, can can this level of automation be, be you know, kind of bundled into a mammography gantry so that it does some of these things? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we did with Be Brilliant. We took a lot of these, um, a lot of these things into consideration as we designed this unit to allow for automated movements and knowing the workflow for the technologist. All right, so Christy, you mentioned uh, Be Brilliant. So let's uh, let, let's talk about the system right now. Maybe we uh, we can get a, an image up here on the screen, and you can kind of show us what we're looking at. Yeah, definitely. You know, for the patient, we rounded the edges of our paddles to alleviate pressure points. We have an optimized face shield that leans in so that technologists can get more posterior tissue, mood lighting, a unique intelligent compression system that delivers the right amount of compression consistently and comfortably. This system is called Opcom. Uh, this compression system uses software to find the optimal compression for the optimal image while not overdoing it. It also senses when that paddle has reached the breast and it automatically slows down so it can ease the patient into compression and it keeps, it keeps us from overwhelming that patient with compression. Some might think of a comfortable mammogram as an oxymoron, but as a patient who's had multiple mammograms, they can attest that this is not an oxymoron on a Siemens unit. I had mine just a few weeks ago, like I mentioned earlier, and I had no pressure points even in that upper axilla area um, on the MLO view. So let's take a look at the next image. Comfort Guide is a really unique feature. All of that exam information is positioned at eye level. It has patient's name, compression, thickness and, and what view is selected at the workstation. So there's no more rubber necking for information as you perform the exam. And having that patient name in front of you is absolutely phenomenal. I always wanted my patients to feel like individuals when they were in my care. And using their name frequently throughout that exam can reassure patients and helps to create that relationship, even if it's brief, which builds their confidence and trust in you. My next favorite feature is Comfort Move with one-click positioning. When you log in to Be Brilliant, your favorite exam protocols are saved for easy selection. 
An example, again, is my right, left, left, right. So if I log into Be Brilliant, it will automatically start with that right CC. And then as I go through my exam, it will move on to that next, uh, that next view. The cherry on top is how the tube moves out of the way as well. So once you get to your MLO, the gantry or the tube and detector, they move independently of one another. They'll automatically move to that preset angle for your MLO. And then that tube head automatically moves up and out of the way. So you can have easy access to the patient. Again, no bending, twisting, or hunching under the unit. After you place compression on the patient, the tube then automatically moves to the start position. So it gets ready for that acquisition. By the time you make it back to the workstation, it's all ready to go. And we can take an, Im an image immediately. We also have easy turn compression knobs. Uh, I think most mammographers have worked on systems where you really have to crank on that compression knob. Um, I have to tell you my wrist, I really don't like that repetitive movement. With these easy turn compression knobs, it literally just takes one finger to turn the compression dial. That's awesome. So what, what do you feel like, uh, Christy, is, is sort of the net outcome of all these great features? All of these features I've talked about have two goals, to provide an exceptional user experience um, to reduce repetitive strain injuries for technologists, and then also provide an exceptional patient experience. Again, technologists spend their entire day with MAMO units. Uh, we must make it easy to use, and it needs to be ergonomic. We need to keep our staff happy and healthy um, to help them with staff satisfaction, right, and retain those excellent employees. And it's also imperative to provide patients with an exceptional experience so they come back to your organization year after year. I think Siemens has really provided a powerful tool to help us meet these challenges with Be Brilliant. Yeah, and, and hopefully we can get those um, those screening rates higher. Yeah, um, exactly. So th this is, you know, all sounds like Siemens has been really doing an amazing job with with this package of technology. What what do you think that we can look forward to from the company? And and you mentioned that, that Be Brilliant just recently got uh, FDA clearance, so this is going to be on the market soon. Yeah, it's actually already on the market. Um, we'll be announcing even more fascinating technological advancements very soon surrounding Be Brilliant. I'd encourage listeners to keep Siemens mammography on their radar. This is the first time in over 10 years, truly new innovative technology has been brought to mammography. And I think it has the power to take us into a new era in breast imaging. All right, well, it's be, it'll be exciting to watch. So some great discussion today. I'd like to thank uh, Christy Devine of Siemens Health and Ears for being with us. Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate it. My name is Brian Casey of The Imaging Wire.